Hey guys, now a lot of you really seem to like the last video and I got a lot of questions about the fire outline effect that I use. So in this video, I wanna share with you how to make the original Ben TK fire outline effect. You can easily apply this effect to your own clips, but the clips that I'm using, I source from Envato Elements, who are the sponsor of today's video. Also in this video, I'm only showing you how to make the fire outline effect. Now, if you're interested in the fire tunnel part of the tutorial, then I cover this in my Motion Effects Pro course. And I put a link in the description below to that if you wanna check that out. Now the clip I'm using here on screen, I source from Envato Elements. But like I said before, you can pretty much use any clip. In the original effect, Ben TK used this to trace around the outside of a tattoo. But when I was searching through Envato Elements, they've got a ton of clips already with tattoos on them but I found that you can pretty much make this work with anything that you can trace around. So you could use this by tracing around a doorway or around a window. Any of those sort of clips will work perfectly fine for this effect. The other clip I downloaded was this fire embers overlay, which just added that really nice final touch to the video. The other thing that Envato also offers is a ton of transition packs. Now I noticed in the original video that Ben TK used this sort of warp zoom effect. Now you can go out and make a warp zoom from scratch, but it might take you a while. Otherwise you can just download any number of the transition packs and just drag and drop them straight over your video. You have unlimited access to over 55 million assets, including fonts, photos, video templates, and Adobe templates. So chances are you'll find exactly what you need. Now, if you're interested in checking them out, I've put a link in the description below, which will give you 50% off annual subscriptions, giving you access to everything all for less than $20 a month. So I've got a new composition here with my clip laid out in the timeline. And the first part is we need to trace over the, the tattoo. I'm just going to duplicate that layer and then I want to come over to time and freeze frame that layer. So now we have a layer that's freeze framed at that point. Now we need to create a mask which traces around the outside of our tattoo here. Now there's two ways to do this, the easy way or the hard way. Now the hard way involves using the pen tool and manually going through and drawing a mask, but I wanna show you an even easier and faster way. So with that layer, what I've done is I've added a few things here. I've added the find edges, and you can find all of these by just searching for them under help. I've added the hue and saturation, and I've dragged the saturation all the way down to zero, and I've also clicked this invert button for find the edges. The next thing is I've turned on the levels, where I've added a levels and I've dragged in on the highlight and the shadows. And what that does is it basically creates, as you can see here, a really defined you know, mask of that outline of that tattoo. Then on top of that, I've used the extract tool and the extract tool by dragging up on the blacks, what that does is it basically removes the background of that image so that we end up with just that outline of that tattoo that's left. Now what we can do with this is we can now use this to create a mask. So now with that layer, I now want to pre-compose all of that into a new layer. So I'm gonna take that, come up to layer and down to pre-compose. Wanna move all of this into a new composition. Now with that, we now want to isolate just the tattoo. So what I did here was I just grabbed my pen tool and I just drew a quick mask that went around the outside, trying to isolate that tattoo as best I can. So we just kind of end up with that tattoo. Now you can go through and always refine that mask and obviously yours is gonna be different than the footage that you're using. So you'll need to draw a different mask as well as use different settings for all of those different effects that we applied. Now the next part is the easy part is we can just apply an auto trace functionality to this. So I come up to layer and then down to auto trace. Now the auto trace, what it'll do, it'll automatically trace around all of those lines that are on the screen. Screen. Now the settings that I used are these settings here and you can change them by just entering in those numbers and that might give you a good starting point, but yours is gonna vary depending on you know, the, the type of clip that you're using. So the one thing that I do recommend messing around with is the tolerance. So you can basically drag this up and down and you're trying to get as much of that stuff highlighted as possible. So I've got mine turned all the way down. 
and you can also adjust the threshold. And it's really whatever's gonna give you the best coverage. So once you're kind of happy with that, you can just basically hit okay. So now we have that layer sitting over our original footage and it already has all these masks on it. And what we want to do is at the moment that is not tracked into that scene. So we need to create a little bit of tracking data in order to get it to stick to that position. So the way we do this, is we take our original clip and we just come over here and track motion. We wanna do scale and rotation. Just pick two points there and then just start tracking forward. And once that's done, then you can just create a new null object here and I'm just gonna basically take that data there and then parent it to that null and then hit apply. Apply all that data there. Go back to where my two layers line up and then I can take that layer that we created up the top here and just parent it to that null. So now we have that layer basically stuck to that arm. Now it doesn't have to go all the way through because we're gonna start the transition somewhere back here. Now the next part of this involves using a third party plugin which is free and that's the Video Copilot Saber plugin. So I've put a link in the description below so you can download and install that plugin into After Effects and then you can continue following along with the tutorial. I can come up to Effect down to Video Copilot and add the Saber plugin. Now once you have the Saber plugin, there's a couple of things you want to change. The first is we need to set it to look at the masks. So I come down here to the render settings and I want to make sure that this is set to disable. The other thing is you also want to come over here and make sure this is set to transparent, so the composite settings. The other thing you want to do is then set this to be a layer mask. Now as soon as you do that, it's gonna add the effect to trace around those mask lines that we had. Now the other thing that I did, or the only other thing that I changed, was I came up here to the presets and I changed this to be burning. You can pretty much use any of these presets from the drop down. And I think this is the best way to go because it's gonna save you a lot of time from doing this from scratch and it's gonna give you pretty good results. Once you've done that, it simplifies the whole process for you because it does a lot of the effect for you. All you then have to do is just mess around with these settings in here. The first is you can just change the core size, which I dropped down to be about one. The glow bias, I also drop down and the glow spread. And then I also drop the intensity down to around 14. You can also mess around with the color, but I think by default, that burning one looks pretty good. And obviously the, your footage is gonna be different from mine. So the exact numbers that you're gonna use are gonna be different. But by using one of the presets, it's just gonna simplify that whole process for you. And means that you only have to mess around with one of those settings. So once you've got that, you've pretty much got that finished effect, right? It's already working. And then you don't really have to animate it much after that. The only other thing you might like to do is go into the flicker settings and also change the flicker speed. So at this point, what I did was I now wanted to basically have a transition in. And an easy way to do that is by creating a new solid and then just repositioning that here and then just grabbing my pen tool. And I just kind of drew out a rough sort of pencil shape here, something like this. And then I set that fire outline effect to be the alpha mat of that white solid. Now what that does is it means that it's going to reveal wherever that white solid is, it's going to reveal that layer underneath, which is the fire outline effect. Now to get to that, you'll need to hit the toggle switches and modes button down here and it'll reveal that track mat and it'll need to be underneath that white solid. Now, once we've got the white solid in place, what we can also do is come down to the mask settings here and I can also add a little bit of a feather. And then I can just basically add by hitting P, I can add a position keyframe there. and then one back here and just have that basically animate in like that. I can even scale this up. So we kind of get that effect going like this. Now you might also like to just also parent that to that tracker or that null, and that'll help just keep everything in position. But now you've kind of got, if I move this back, we've kind of got this animating in over the top of our fire effect. 
So that's pretty much an easy way to have that reveal effect of that fire over the outline. Now, once you've done that, the last part of this is creating the zoom transition over the top. So to do this, I just right click, create a new camera. I can make this 35 mils. And then I just need to make all of these layers 3D. And as that starts to transition on that fire effect, I can then go along on my timeline. I can come down here and create a position and a point of interest. Move along my timeline and then start zooming in that camera into that thing. So I just keep using hitting C on the keyboard to move around. And I'm just looking for a point that I can kind of zoom in here on the tattoo. So I'm just moving around until I find a point that I can zoom into. And then once you've kind of got a spot and you're kind of happy with that, you can just test out by just sort of playing through. You can also move the start of these back. Right click on them and make them all easy ease. And then I can come into the graph editor by hitting this button. And now I can take both of those and add a bit of a transition. So it's got a bit of a slow ramp into that effect, right? So it's kind of creating that zoom. The other thing you can also do is add a bit of Z rotation. Do the same thing again by adding a little bit of Z rotation. So that just gives the camera a little bit of a twist. Also add easy ease onto these and give them a little bit of a speed ramp as well. And once you get to this point, then you can transition through that and into the next scene. Now what I did here in my original was I created this little basically mass transition which went into my tunnel effect. And what I did here was I just created a little mask. So I grabbed my layer, which was my zoom effect, and then I created just a, a mask. So by grabbing my pen tool, I drew a little mask, which went around that opening at that point that I wanted to zoom through. And then I went into the mask settings and created a little mask expansion. So I had it scaled down to negative. So that means that it's closed up and we can't see through it. And as then the camera zooming through, I started basically expanding that mask to allow the camera to basically zoom through. And then I turned that layer off and revealed the next layer underneath. So that's an easy way. If you wanna transition from one shot into another, you can just create that little mask, overlay it over a different video, and now you've got a little transition point that you can go through. The other thing I also did was I turned on motion blur for that and all of the layers in that composition that were moving. So that helps just give it a little bit of motion blur, which sits over the top and adds to the overall finished effect. So that's actually how easy it is to recreate this effect. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Thanks very much to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in checking them out, you can use a special link in the description below. You can check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.